So now we've learned the basics about what the micro bit and some servos can do, we're going to use a second micro bit to add a remote control. And to do that, we're going to start off by learning a little bit about the inputs. So go to the input column and drag across the on button A pressed brackets and then pop yourself some LEDs in there from the basics column. What we're going to do is when we press button A, we want our remote control unicorn to stop. And to signify that, I've done a little cross. So when you press A and B here, it's going to come up with a cross picture. Now, the next thing we want you to do is start to move forwards. So the micro bit inside it has a little accelerometer that can tell if you're shaking it. So what we're going to do is drag across and on shake and then I'm going to put some LEDs to, with a, an arrow that shows going forward. Next, we're going to drag over another input. Now you see it greys out. That's because we've already used shake. So we're going to press the little arrow next to it and we're going to choose logo up. That means from when we go from a flat position to an up position with the logo on top, it knows that. So what we're going to do then is, much like a horse, when you go, whoa, pull on the reins, we're going to go backwards. Here we are. So shaking the reins, it's going to go forwards. And going, whoa, and pulling the reins up is going to go backwards. So next, we've got left, which is tilt left. I'm going to put some LEDs in to signify going left. And you've guessed it. I'm going to make an arrow showing an arrow going left, uh, but you can put your own animations in if you like, or different, different pictures. And then finally, last input on tilt right, okay. we're going to do an LED arrow going right. Now obviously these are just showing the LEDs, these aren't actually controlling anything at the moment. They're just pictorial representations of what we're going to make the other micro bit do on board the unicorn. This is going to be the remote control that you're going to hold in your hand. So what we're going to do is send the signal over using radio. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is pull over from the radio to radio send number. And we're going to do that for each of the commands. So button A, B pressed. It's going to send the radio number zero. Now, we're going to change the on shake. If we shake it, it's going to send the number one. You see what's happening here. On logo up, that's going backwards. We're going to radio send number two. Going left, number three. And finally, going right, number four. So when we do those things, the micro bit in your hand will send a signal to the micro bit in the unicorn to do those five commands. Now the last thing that we've got to do is set it up. So on start, remember the on start loop from the other tutorial, we need to set the radio number. This is especially important if you've got more than one unicorn. So if you've got several unicorns, you need to change the, send, uh, the um, signal number, the group number, sorry, to different numbers. Otherwise, they won't be able to communicate with each other. They'll get confused. Now, I'm not doing any forever loops, so I've just dragged that across to delete it. And there you have it. You finish the radio transmitter for your robot unicorn. The last thing left to do is give it a name, download it, save it onto your computer, and then upload it to your micro bit using the USB cable. All that's left to do now is set up the micro bit unicorn itself. So, the first thing to code for the micro bit on board the robot unicorn is to set the radio group as the same group that your controller is sending. 
So in our other piece of code, we set it at group one. We also need to make sure that our robot unicorn starts off by standing still. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable. This variable is going to correspond to the number that our remote control has sent to it. We're gonna call it received, all right? And that's gonna be set to zero, which is the number for stop. Then, we're going to go to the radio column and drag across on radio received, received number, and we're going to insert a variable in there too. So we're going to drag across set item to, and then change item to received. And then finally, we're going to drag over received number. So what this is doing is just setting the number that the radio has received to the number that corresponds to the command that our robot is doing. All right, so that's our setup complete. Now we just have to set what each of the commands do. And we're gonna use a little piece of logic to do that. So logic is just a way of helping a computer understand what it needs to do. And they're often called if, else, statements. If you pull across this simple if-else statement, we can use it to control our robot unicorn. So first of all, let's set up the received number. Okay? Oh, that's the wrong thing. And second, so what we're going to do is if, and a little bit of math here, so if the received that's the variable, so that's the received number it's got from the control, equals zero, then a thing. And that thing is going to be the servo instructions. So we go back down to pins, if you remember from the first tutorial, and we're going to change those pins in the same way that we did in that first tutorial. So to tell it to go forwards or backwards. So the zero is stop, so we're going to set it to two zero, so the servos aren't doing anything. And we're going to do the same for the other pin, so both of the wheels will be at a standstill. Then we're going to add in the extra commands, and in order to have the space to do that, we're going to have to click on this little cog. And you see on the right hand side there, it's got if, else. Well, we're going to add some extra things in there to give us room for our commands. So else if, let's pop a couple of those extra ones in there. So we've got, um, we've got room to put in the instructions for going backwards, forwards, and round and round. Take that last one off, okay. And now to minimise that little window, you want to click on that cog again, and it'll go away. All right, so we're going to follow this pattern. If the variable that's received is a zero, it's going to stop. Uh, what if it's a one? Well, we want it to go forward. That's when we shake it. So we're going to do the same thing. Variables column, received. Then go back down to pins. Oh, no, let's duplicate it. Here we are. Quick move. And duplicate that one. There we go. I'm going to change... Oh, I forgot to change the um, pin. Here we are. So you want to make sure that each of the pins are, are the right ones. So the zero is controlling the left wheel and one is controlling the right wheel. If you've wired them up properly. So now we are going to add in our figures, like in the first tutorial, to make it go forwards. We want the left wheel to go forwards at 100, and the right wheel to go forwards at 1. And the reason for that, if you remember on our wiring, is that um, the wheels went in, one of them went in one way up, and the other one went in the other way up. That's why the, the numbers are different. And here we are, so let's um, do command 2 here, duplicating those, 
And then this is to go to turn left. And that is. Oh no, this is going backwards, sorry. Command 2 is going backwards. So we're doing that. Um, that's the same as 1, but opposite. So 10, 100. Um, and if you find that when you upload this code that you've actually wired the pins up wrongly, don't worry about it. You can either switch the pins around, so switch the crocodile clips on pin 1 and pin 2, or you can just flip the code around um, in, the, in the code editor. It's up to you. Okay, so the last two instructions we're going to do is to turn left and turn right. So 3, which is tilt left, um, is um, 20, 20. And we're just going to add in a final else if um, statement to have to have room for turn right. So put that little cog away. And the final one is to go right. So that is command 4 from your radio controller. And the pins are going to be 80, 80. Now, these are just ones that I've settled on. You can, um, you can experiment with different settings um, as you want. Um, I just particularly like this one because one of them goes really slowly and one of them goes really quickly. And I think it looks a bit like a pirouette, which makes me laugh. So um, that's why I did it. But yeah, have a play around with your own settings. And of course, you can change your radio control um, to do different gestures as well. That's totally up to you. Okay, so one final tip I'm going to give you for debugging. This, I mean, this will work perfectly well, but um, someone gave me this tip is if you are testing it before you put it in your unicorn, put LEDs for the different commands in so you can see visually before you hook it all up what it's receiving. Um, so having those little visual cues, if something's going wrong, you can work it out a little bit more easily um, and work out where the error in your code is. Okay, so the last thing to do is to download it to the microbit that lives in your um, robot unicorn. So give it a good name, uh, download it to your machine and upload it the normal way using your USB plug to your unicorn. Um, and there you have it. Well done. You've completely finished the first version of your robot unicorn. Try playing with your code and seeing what it does. Good luck and have fun.